Welcome back to the Dogwood Podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Cumby, and today we're talking with our graphic designer about the process of designing a logo. Welcome to the podcast, Lizzie. Thank you, Lauren. It's really fun to have these with like the co-workers um, because it's always funny to me to see how how everybody reacts to being on the podcast because <laughs> we're all very knowledgeable about our stuff. But so something about putting a microphone in front of people always just, you know, different people react different ways. So no, that's what I told Mark. I was like, I'm going to forget how to speak English as soon as the <laughs> mic goes live. So right. Yeah. We'll exactly. see how this, ha- how this turns out. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. Well, you've been with us now for a little more than six months, right? Um, And you're doing an awesome job. We have loved having you here. Um, But since it's your first time on the podcast, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and just let everybody know a little bit about your background and how you ended up at Dogwood? Yeah. So, yeah, like Lauren said, my name is Lizzie Bigelow. I'm originally from Mississippi, moved around a lot as a kid, graduated college from the University of Alabama with an interdisciplinary degree in small business management and graphic design. Mm -hmm. And over the course of my degree, realized I really loved the graphic design part and needed to sort of finesse my skills in that. And Dogwood was a great fit and still has been a great fit. And the last six months have just flown by and I feel myself growing every day in my skill set. And Dogwood has been very gracious to me to allow lots of mistakes and growth (laughs) and things. And so... I've had a great time. Yeah. We really enjoyed having you. And I mean, I'm glad you feel like you're growing because we definitely see you growing as time has gone on. I mean, and just being willing to learn new things and do new things that aren't necessarily in your your wheelhouse is just so great. It's really a, a characteristic that we value here. So we it's appreciate you. Um, well, today we wanted to talk a little bit about logo design. And I know that's kind of on our brains a lot currently because we have a couple of those that are just kind of rolling around at the moment Um, and we talk about it a lot just the things that we wish people would do differently or the things that we wish we had done differently Um, and so you had mentioned that it might be a cool podcast to do to talk about logo design and kind of how people should think about that Um, so we've done dogwood has done a lot of different logo designs over the last five years or so. And I always kind of feel like if people were more informed about the process, that it would always go a little bit better. Uh, so maybe, maybe we can tell people to come listen to this podcast (laughs) the next time that we have somebody come in for a logo design. Um, but so my kind of thoughts were that the first things when designing a logo are kind of the pre-design steps that nobody ever thinks about. Um, things like knowing the purpose of your organization and knowing your audience and just like having a clear understanding of your identity. Um, I think we have seen that that is really detrimental to a lot of logo designs, uh, especially here recently. Have you, you seen that in your previous work and here? And Yeah, I think, yeah, I think number one, this, this episode is going to be a great resource because there is a real art to both guiding a client through the process Mm -hmm. and also the client being prepared for the process Mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a very, yeah, it's a very specific thing. And I did some freelance work before working here and uh, doing logo design because I love, I love logo design. Mm -hmm. I love brand design. It's, it's where my passion sort of sits within the scope of graphic design. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I've learned some, some techniques and and we've definitely grown a lot in the last six months learning how to guide people through the process. Mm-hmm. And especially towards the beginning, you know, I mentioned earlier that my degree was sort of a multidisciplinary skill set. And what I love about the beginning parts of logo design is just what you mentioned. It sort of is less about any sort of visual or colors or imagery or iconography or anything like that. It is so sort of business oriented. And mm-hmm. I really, I really enjoy that. And I think it's a great way to sort of get the business owner, organization, um, leader, whoever we are meeting with, um, to sort of really, you know, wherever their, their skill set normally lies in business and in running an organization. And so it's a great time to sort of harness that part of their skill set and sort of talk about, well, what is, like you said, what does your organization do? Mm-hmm. Who, who do we want this, um, logo to reach in terms of demographic? Right. Do we want this to stand out from other things in the industry or do mm-hmm. we want it to fit in? You know, what do we what do we want this sort of image to do, Mm -hmm. you know, most importantly? And so I think that's 
it's a great place to start. Yeah, I think those are some of the questions that people don't really think about. So Mm -hmm. kind of for us, obviously, step one, somebody comes to us and they're like, hey, I want to do a logo. We kind of start asking them those basic questions of, you know, do you know your mission statement? Do you have an idea of who your audience is? All those kind of things. Because if they don't have answers to that, like we really don't even need to start trying to put pen to paper on a look. Um, But usually once somebody moves past that point, we have kind of that discovery meeting. And that's where people think that we're going to come in asking a bunch of like, do you, what colors do you like? And I mean, we do ask those questions, but I think those questions that you were just mentioning are some that people don't really think about, especially I hadn't thought about this a lot until you mentioned it the other day, but the question of, do you want to kind of stand out or fit into your industry standard? And I think we obviously go, Oh, I want to stand out from everybody. But I think that's a real question that people need to ask. Cause I mean, there are standards that have been set in a lot of different industries and niches for kind of the vibe that you want to give off. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that was a really good point to bring up. Um, but then of course we talk about some of the creative questions. So what are kind of some of those questions that you would come into a kind of discovery meeting and ask, what should people be thinking about? Yeah. Well, I love to sort of think about whether the organization is new or 50 years old, Mm -hmm. you know, what is the core of this business? You know, why, if it's named a specific thing, why is it named that, you know, walk me through the history of right down to the, you know, the mission statement or why did from day one, this business, why does this exist? Mm -hmm. You know, because I think that's a, it's a real look into, well, what kind of, you know, visuals or iconography are we going to pull out of, of that? Um, Also, if it's, you know, a new organization, they've never had a logo before Mm -hmm. that can be helpful. And same thing with like, let's look at, you know, what do you like or what do you don't like about your current branding? Um, What do you like about, again, going back to what's look around at your industry, look around Mm -hmm. at other brands and sort of pull together what, you know, likes, dislikes, Um, and again, we're not even looking at like specific like colors Mm -hmm. or like the specific iconography of the logo, but what is it about this logo that you like or dislike, whether, Mm -hmm. you know, the styling, what do you like about, you know, what it does as a, as a mark, a logo Mm -hmm. mark. So just all sorts of those things. Yeah. I remember one meeting that we were in before you were with us and our previous graphic designer and I are sitting there in this meeting and we're asking them about the same kind of things, you know, the vibes Mm -hmm. of of what you're trying to give off. And they just could not wrap their brains (laughs) around what that meant. And so we tried to show them images and be like, you know, which one of these do you gravitate towards? Not like, which one do you like? I like purple versus red, Mm -hmm. but like, which one do you gravitate towards? We're not getting to specifics at this point. It's just general ambiance and the aura of that thing. Yeah. And they just could not comprehend that. We ended up showing them colors and we're like, which one of these, like, how do these make you feel? Mm -hmm. And literally one of these people looked at us and said, colors make you feel things. (laughs) Oh Lord. And we were like, oh, this is going to be a long process. (laughs) And again, I think part of that is, you know, you leave so much of that up to us at, you know, you're hiring us for a reason and you put your trust in our years of, of design experience and our education to guide mm-hmm. you through that. And, um, yeah, I think it's that left brain, right brain thing that you really have to harness throughout logo mm-hmm. design, especially in the, like I said, in the beginning stages where you're not talking about specifics, it's very yeah. broad, you know, very sort of data driven almost, mm-hmm. you know, of things that you want this thing to do. Yeah. I think that's why I like the graphic design slash just like design aspect of a lot of the stuff that we do because it is kind of the best of both worlds because there is that artsy fartsy like you know left brain kind of stuff but then like there's also so much just knowledge and logic that goes behind a lot of the decisions that we make like I think people often think that you just like slap your favorite color on top of something and like call it a day but there's so much thought that goes into all of it Mm -hmm. um One thing that you mentioned was that there's some similarities between, you know, a brand new organization that's never had a logo versus something that's existed for a while. Um, How do you go about talking to somebody who has a logo that has existed for, I mean, a good period of time? And how do you walk them through the process of kind of a a redesign? And how do you tell them kind of which direction to go as far as like throw it all out the window or kind of work with what you've got and just make it better? How do you have those conversations? Yeah, I think it's, um, again, you kind of have to take a step back and think, well, how much, you know, equity do we have in this current 
brand, the mm-hmm. colors, the logo mark, you know, whether that's out in the community or if you have that logo on a product, you know, again, what is that logo doing? How, how, how recognizable is that mm-hmm. logo? Um, and again, I think it just all has to do with how long that organization has been around and whether we want it to sort of refresh that current logo and mm-hmm. the colors and bring it up to speed in terms of like being nicer um, and more modern. Mm-hmm. Cause again, that's just so it so depends on every organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the great thing about design is it is a, you know, a very specific set of principles. Mm-hmm. It's just such a case by case basis mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I, I think a lot of people think that, if I'm going to rebrand, quote unquote, or redesign, that I have to kind of go like completely opposite direction of where I am. Because I think a lot of people, especially for logos that have been around for 20, 30 years, you look at it and you go like, oh, I've been looking at this for like the last 20 yeah. years and it's so boring and blah, blah, blah. And so they kind of like run in the opposite direction when a lot of but times. It's important not to like, yeah, discount the strength of, mm-hmm. of what you have built and whether you think it's objectively good or bad, you know, what can we do to sort of work with what you have and make it really beautiful and mm-hmm. really useful for, you know, what you need. Yeah. So, yeah. And those are all a, lot the, of, a lot of opportunity in that. Yeah, for sure. And those are all the kinds of conversations that we have in those discovery meetings. And um, I think people just knowing what to expect in those is a big part of making those meetings successful. Um, but then, so we have a discovery meeting, we come home, gather all of our notes from whoever all came to that meeting. Cause usually it's you and me and maybe Brian in a meeting. And so the three of us, we're all listening to the same conversation, but we might have picked up on things a little bit differently. And so we meet and talk about that, but then that kind of brings us to round one of design. So how do you take all of that information that you just gathered in this meeting and kind of start trying to put pen to paper? Yeah. Well, usually out of those meetings, I tend to sort of, you know, and I would say I think the first round is arguably the most crucial. You know, Mm -hmm. you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of what we want this to do. And I usually have some sort of idea of like iconography and, and that sort of thing. And so what we do is we start in black and white. We don't want to think about the influence that color is going to have on it. We want that mark to be very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Um, And so whether they want something sort of abstract or, you know, pictographical, I just start to sort of draw influence from the sort of things that they like, whether mm-hmm. that's a clean logo or that's a more illustrative logo um, and just sort of start to pull inspiration and see what's working with other brands um, and sort of mesh that with whatever idea that I had sort of originally had. And I think it's important also to sort of throw everything you got as a designer sort of, you know, at the wall and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. Um because a lot of times I'll even go through several iterations before I even have something to show the client. Very, mm-hmm. very rarely they're like the first idea is the best idea. So it's <laughs> right. very important to sort of really that's your time as the designer to, you know, put your head down and do the best you got on that that first round. Because that's, you know, once you start getting to your second and third rounds, you want to be more or less revising that, you know, those few options that you put together initially. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. How many options do you think is good to kind of give on a first round, like in an ideal world? What would you prefer? I usually go with like two or three, Mm -hmm. Um, usually two that are completely different, but sort of doing the same thing, you Mm -hmm. know, and, and I think it's also, you know, there's such a difference between sort of art and design, you know, art, you can do whatever you want and then hope the viewer gets what you put into it. But as a designer, you need, you know, people to understand, you know, what that, what you meant that mark to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I usually like to have two logos that look different, but are headed towards the same goal Mm -hmm. in two different concepts. And then one more, at least to sort of, whether a different iteration of those two or just a third one altogether. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like I said, because it's the first round, you want to give lots of options, but strong options. Yeah. Definitely strong options. Any like any one of these could be the thing and Mm -hmm. like it would be good. I think that's something that we've had several clients in the past kind of look at things and go, 
like these are really different. Like yeah. why why did you show me all these different things? Or like they'll they'll really gravitate towards one sure. and they're like, oh, this is obviously the better option. Like those ones are not it. And I think people don't understand that that's intentional. Oh yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we didn't just like give you like the second and third string players. Like they're all good options and they're all very different. And the reason that we do that is so that when you have those strong feelings towards one and you really want to go in this direction. Direction, that tells us, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And also, I think a lot of people don't, they don't know necessarily what they like or don't like until they see it. Exactly. And so you see three logos lined up with each other and one of them you're like, oh, I really like that. And the other two you're like, mm, not so much. You might not have been able to verbalize that had you not seen it. And if we had just done one and it happened to be one of those other two that you don't like, then you're just sitting there going, oh, I don't this like isn't it. quite it, but I don't know what is it. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's because, you know, when you give people several different options that are very different, um, that sets the tone for the rest of the design process. It's like, okay, well, they gravitated, gravitated towards this more clean mm -hmm. geometric thing as opposed to this more representational image. And so that, like I said, it, it that sets the tone for mm -hmm. um, the rest of the branding process and will help that go a lot more smoothly when you have a better, even better understanding of what your client um, likes and what represents their business. Yeah, for sure. Well, then after we kind of get that first round put together, it's my favorite part, which is the selling it to yes. them. I love this part. No matter who our designer has been over the years, like that's always the part that they come to me and they're like, hey, this was my thought. And I need you to like make that sound pretty in words. And I and Lauren love does a that. Fantastic job. <laughs> <laughs> I, she writes me a paragraph. I'm like, yes, that is what I <laughs> thought about this. Well, because I think a conversation that we have a lot of times with clients is that there's nothing inherently like the I always use Pepsi. There's mm -hmm. nothing about that circle with those little blue and red swooshes that mean Pepsi. Yeah. Nothing about that means Pepsi. But now when you see it, you know exactly what it is. And so a, a mark it only means as much and a logo only means as much as you make it mean. And so I love getting to kind of craft those stories of, you know, this is the story you can tell with this specific mark and try to like get somebody on board. Um, but that also means that my little feelings get hurt when, when they go, Oh, I like your story, but I don't want it. I don't <laughs> want that logo or like vice versa. Like, Oh, I really like this logo, but I don't, I don't like yeah. Whatever story you just told. But yeah, yeah, I love that part, getting to present it to the clients, kind of share our vision behind things. Um, and that's usually the next step is presenting that, showing them our thoughts behind stuff, um, why we did things and then getting their feedback. Um, and that is, in my opinion, the hardest part of this whole thing is who all do we get feedback from? How much feedback do they give us? I think a lot of times people are afraid to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. And I I understand and I appreciate that they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But also I tell people all the time, we're professionals. Mm -hmm. Like this is what we do for a living. Nobody's going to go home and cry in their pillow. Like it's totally fine. I would much rather you tell me how much you hate everything about this or how much you love everything about this than you to be kind of like, oh, well, they're both kind of good. Yeah. And then and it we takes need to hear us those things up front or yeah. else we're going to get down the line, you know, our yeah. clients going to be like, actually, I hate it. And yeah. We're like, well, actually, we're I done. hate everything. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. No, we need to hear those things. Yes, for sure. So if you're listening and you're going to do a logo project, tell us everything. Give yeah. us all the feedback. Tell us everything you hate, everything you love. It's okay if the only thing you liked is like the tittle above the <laughs> the eye or whatever. Like if that's all you liked, that's totally fine. Just let us know. Um, but then from there, we kind of do this same process, hopefully only like two or three times. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it goes a little longer than that. But in general, we budget for two to three rounds of revisions, usually with the logo. Um, how how many rounds of revisions do you think is like a good place to start? And then when does it start getting kind of obsess obsessive and why? Yeah, I'd say like four max. Mm -hmm. Because again, I think this goes back to 
both things you just touched on. Number one, at the beginning, we need to be very, very brutally honest about what we like and don't like so that we don't drag it out mm-hmm. too long. And then at the other, on the other hand, you have to know when to cut it off mm-hmm. and say, okay, this can't, this logo can't do everything in the whole world. Right. You know? And I think a lot of it is people forget that the logo is going to be within the context of your branding mm-hmm. and your storytelling and your organization. You know, it's, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's right. going to do everything that you want it to. Um, that, that being said, we want you to be very, very happy with it. We don't want it to get to a point where it's like good enough, you know? Right, right. Um, but that whole process is just about being very honest and also knowing when to move on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very careful balance. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's why we do so many revisions, though, and are so um, communicative with our clients every step of the way is to make sure that we get to a final point, three mm-hmm. or four revisions down the line that we're all thrilled with. Right. And that way, you know, it doesn't not waste time, but, you know, right. it doesn't, yeah. you know, we can get on to the fun part and you don't, uh, the client doesn't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. We just sort of put yeah. a nice bow on things. For sure. Yeah, and so once we get to that point where everybody's kind of happy with with the mark, then we start bringing in the colors and mm-hmm. all that kind of good stuff. So, um, how do you kind of go about not overwhelming yourself or overwhelming the client with, I mean, a literal rainbow of colors that <laughs> things could be? Well, I think some of it comes down to just basic brand or you know design principles and the magical work of designers who have come before me mm-hmm. who have laid the groundwork on color psychology and what colors mean certain things in certain industries. So mm-hmm. that very quickly whittles it down. Um, you know, what do you want these colors to do and feel and that sort of thing? So mm-hmm. um, you get, you can kind of whittle it down that way. And then you have a billion trillion different shades and things. Right. And then you want the, those colors to be accessible. If you want to put them on a, um, a website mm-hmm. or you want to think about putting it on letterhead, it's going to be a light and dark background. So right. once, once you get there, you know, you'll kind of find sort of a mid tone range of, of things within a certain color palette. Mm-hmm. And so that very quickly gets you to a manageable place. Right. And then again, we talk about, well, what is this, what does this logo look like? What does it feel like? What is the brand? Um, you know, what do we want the storytelling to be? Mm-hmm. And that, again, sort of informs the the color process. Right. And then you can put together a couple color palettes and sort of sort of get down the road a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what what are some of those colors that, you know, you talked about this color psychology and all yeah. that. How, what's some of the, the stuff off the top of your head that's like this color typically means this? Well, you know, they say red tends to make people either hungry or angry or mm-hmm. passionate, those type of things. Yeah, that's Same, why Wendy's and yes. McDonald's and all yeah, that. Chick-fil-A and, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yellow, similarly, uh, you know, McDonald's and, and those sort of things. Um, blues, purples, and pinks are very calming. Mm-hmm. Um, greens are always, you know, nature-related, eco-friendly brands mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. Great. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's funny, if you look at your phone and you say, let me look at all the green apps. Mm -hmm. All those green apps are going to be sort of within the same genre. Mm -hmm. And they're almost all the exact same color green. Yeah. I think that's really interesting to like, look at your phone and like, look at all the blue apps. Mm -hmm. What are the blue apps for? And oh, they're all kind of the same blue, Mm -hmm. you know? I always admire like T-Mobile for going (laughs) with like hot pink. Right. (laughs) Yes. Because part of me is like, well, You know, those things sort of inform your decisions, but also don't be afraid to like sort of think outside the box and Mm -hmm. think about with strong branding and, you know, that sort of thing. What can we sort of push Mm -hmm. in terms of how how do we use colors, you know? Yeah. There's one app that I use with literally one group of people in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they started using this app. When there are so many other like chat apps that we could be using and now, of course, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but I had literally never heard of it until my book book club people wanted to start using it. And it has like this bright green, like it's the same color green as like the cash app <laughs> kind of logo. Um, and I, it just always kind of is weird because I house it in the same group with all of my like bookish stuff. Mm-hmm. So all of my reading apps and all that kind of good stuff. And then it's just like this bright green 
app just sticking out there. But yeah. I mean, I guess it makes That's it fine. easy to find within yeah. that group. But it's just the outlier. Doesn't mm-hmm. make sense with all the other things. But I know. Uh, well. Colors are always really fun to work with with our clients and kind of figure out. I feel like that's kind of what makes it all kind of come together and makes it all make sense when they finally see it with the the color and it like they're like, oh yeah, I can see that being used on our website yeah. or on, get really excited. It's really magical at that yeah. point where it's like all our hard work is looking <laughs> looking real. <laughs> right? It's yeah, so this fun. is a real thing. Thank yeah. goodness. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, but from there, we see it. We finally have colors. We know what imagery we're using. It's a real thing. Um, then we make guidelines. Um, how do you feel about making the guidelines? Do you enjoy making the guidelines? Mm-hmm. Is it just kind of a part of the process? Part of me enjoys it because it's such a labor of love, right? Mm-hmm. And I've done so much for this brand. I've gotten so invested with the company and I just so want to see it succeed. Mm-hmm. And you want that brand to be used really well. Yeah. And with, um, you know, you want the logo to be put on the right backgrounds and the right pictures and to be used with the most loving care because that's part of, you know, it's because I care about your business, right? right. And like, that's good, part of what makes everything look legitimate and professional and so um yeah i enjoy writing those guidelines because you know you're you think about passing the torch off to somebody Mm -hmm. you know it's like oh this logo has been my baby but you know now i have (laughs) to like yeah here you go take care of it (laughs) um use it well and you know i enjoy it part of it to me is almost like teaching you know Mm -hmm. because it's like well i've been equipped with these wonderful you know this wonderful education and knowing all these design principles and how to use these things really well because the one the great thing about design is you don't have to be artistic because it's a it's a set of of you know principles Mm -hmm. and it's a skill set right so if you can sort of work that into the brand guidelines and sort of inform people and teach people on how to you know, respect your, your brand and your colors and really make it, you know, pull together. And you Mm -hmm. can sort of reference that anytime you're lost on, um, you know, social graphics or whatever you want to apply that, um, brand and logo to, Mm -hmm. this is sort of your Holy grail for, well, how do we make this look beautiful and how do we make this look the best it possibly can? Um, you know, and that all feeds back into your business. So yeah, Yeah. it's fun. I love the style guides because my super type A personality (laughs) loves rules. Yeah. I love rules. I love it when there is a right and a wrong way to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's what all the, like the style guide is that list of rules that tells me I can use it this way, but not that way. I can use it in these colors, but not that color. Yeah. It can be this close to something, but it can't be that close to something. There's great security in that. Yeah. It's so good. Well, and it, it's so frustrating to see a really great logo that has been used badly yes. or used wrong. Yes. And if you use it badly over time, eventually it loses the impact that it yeah. used to have. And I think that's where a lot of kind of redesigns that we've had over the years have come from is just it's existed for so long and we've just kind of willy nilly used it on stuff to the point where we kind of look at it and go, eh. Like, it's just not it's that not great. what we want it to do. Yeah. Whereas when it was first made, it mm-hmm. probably did have that punch that you wanted. And, like, there's a reason that we tell people to use things a certain way. So, yeah, I, I'm a sucker for the guidelines. I yeah. love them. Um, but once we've done that, we then deliver the final product. Yes. Um, and so one of the things that I think people don't always think about is, all the different file types that we give you of your logo, all the different layouts that we give you of your logo, um, the black and white versions of your logos. So kind of what are all the different pieces that somebody can expect when they get a final product from us? Sure. So yeah, they'll get our a PDF of the brand guide. And then in terms of the different logo types, you'll get different sizes of different formats. And typically that's like a PNG, which means there's no, it's on a transparent background. There's mm-hmm. no background. And then JPEG um, does have a background and can be used for web and emails and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes we give you sort of an SVG that would be semi-editable if Mm -hmm. you needed to sort of tweak something or say there's like a tagline at the bottom you need to change, you know, like very, very small things like that. Um, I wouldn't change anything crazy. Consult us first, please. (laughs) Uh, uh, So, yeah, that's that's sort of the main ones that you're going to need is one with a background, one with not a background, and a couple different sizes of of things so that you can upload them to the appropriate Mm -hmm. um, places because some 
places you're going to upload them doesn't want a big logo and some you want it to be really crisp and, and clean and mm-hmm. um yeah those are the different kinds yeah and then we also do you know like a stacked version and a horizontal oh, version yes. yeah, yeah, typically yeah, yeah. and i think sometimes that's one for like a social icon right and, right and, right and, yeah or sometimes if depending on how the imagery or the what's it called like the icon yeah there we yeah. go um if the icon's kind of something that can stand alone mm-hmm. like we'll give you just the icon yeah, we'll give you a sub mark and um yeah like you said the horizontal mm-hmm. one and like all the different sizes and formats of that your heart could, could right. desire um and then guard that safe <laughs> yes <laughs> keep that in a good place where everybody can access it because there's right. nothing worse than having to send that out to somebody that needs to put your logo on something and them mm-hmm. having getting a crunchy yeah. Weird logo and right. you're not knowing where your own logo is. So yeah. that's yeah. my other advice is, is keep that safe somewhere on a thumb drive or on Google drive and keep, learn how to use all of those different formats. Cause they're all, they're all included for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I had a couple of little tips and I guess really just tips for when you're doing logo design that I had written down and I'll see if you uh, have any more to go along with them. But one of the first things that I had written down was avoid design by committee. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. one that I preach all the time. Uh, I I think people mean well and they want everybody's opinions and they want everybody to feel included and all that kind of good stuff, but it just never works out well. It, it's just not, not a good idea. Uh, why, do, why do you think that is, that people try to do design by committee and then why it just doesn't really Well, work? because I think it's a reflection of people think about their audience, right? And it's like, all these different people of all Mm -hmm. these different diverse backgrounds and all those things. So you think, well, if I have sort of a control group that would reflect that, then that must be a good idea. Mm -hmm. But it isn't necessarily a good idea because just like food or fashion or anything else, everybody's going to have slightly different tastes. Right. And if they're just presented with something that, you know, has been thought about a lot by professionals and by the executives in the company and Mm -hmm. like really, I mean, you know, a well thought out logo, And they're most likely going to get on board with it. But if they are given the opportunity to critique it, they're going to say something. And so, you know, if you have all these different people consulted on something, you are never going to get on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And in a similar vein, the next thing that I had was to remember that your brand or your logo is not about your personal preferences. Yes. Because that's another thing that I think people do is they come in and they're like, oh, well, I'm the marketing person here or I'm the CEO or whatever. And so they take like, oh, well, my favorite color is yellow. And so I want our logo to be yellow or I really don't like hands. So I don't want a hand to be in our logo or whatever. And I think that's one of the things that's really hard to do, because obviously when you're looking at something, your personal opinions and preferences are going to play into that but trying as much as you can to step back and kind of remove yourself from it and try to see almost like treat the organization like it's a person Mm -hmm. and you're just like speaking on behalf of the organization because they're their own thing with their own objectives their own vibes Um, and so trying as much as you can to kind of separate yourself and your personal preferences from what's best for the organization is always a good idea when you're doing logo design Um, and that helps a lot with that when you do have multiple people trying to remove yourself that helps it not to have as much conflict yes if you are going to do a a design by small committee Mm -hmm. um let's see the other things that i talked about were um trying to think about things that stand the test of time Um, this Mm -hmm. is something that you've talked about a lot is just trying when you're designing things to make things that are kind of classic and going to last for a while so what does that kind of mean when you're looking at design yeah absolutely and i think it's really easy when you sort of are taking inspiration from different things to fall into trends and fall into, well, what's popular right now? Mm -hmm. What am I looking at, you know, all around me? How am I seeing different brands sort of evolve their logos, you know, big brands? Um, yeah. And I think it's, it's important to sort of study things like Apple and Mm -hmm. Nike and, and really strong logos that are very simple and sort of take that same sort of set of principles into every design that you make mm-hmm. and make sure that it, while it represents the the company and everything that 
you know, you're looking ahead Mm -hmm. and you're thinking about, well, what's the next iteration going to be of this? And who's the next designer that's going to lay eyes on this and think about all the different contexts and people and everything that's going to look at it. Um, and just try to keep, you know, stick to really classic design Mm -hmm. principles. Uh, yeah, when it comes to designing really classic logos, two of my biggest influences are Saul Bass and Joe Karoff. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Karoff did um, like the 007 oh, logo okay, yeah. and Saul Bass did a lot of like Hitchcock sequences and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And they're definitely very recognizable um, artists. And you'll if you look them up, their work is iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was... Either one of those did the, the Girl Scouts logo. Oh, okay. Um, I believe that was Joe Karoff. And just this, I mean, incredible, incredible designers. So, mm-hmm. yeah, their their work really stands the test of time. And you can see their influence a little bit, you know, by their era that they were in. Mm-hmm. But the the core of the logo and the, the work that they do absolutely stands the test of time. So I reference their work and their logic in design a lot mm-hmm. when, I, when I go into logo design. Yeah. I love that. There's so much that goes into it that people just don't even realize. Yeah. I love it. So much fun. All right. Well, do you have any other pieces of knowledge that you want to share with the people before we close out? Yeah. I mean, I think overall, just enjoy the process. You know, I think this is such a fun aspect of your business, whether you're creative or you think that you're creative minded or not. Um, you know, brand and logo identity can just take your business to another level Mm -hmm. and using that logo well, um, just gives your, your work so much, you know, dignity and, and, you know, I believe so much in the missions of the businesses that we support. And Mm -hmm. this is such a great way to represent that. So, yeah. Well, thank you for being my, my guest today. (laughs) Thank you for having me. It was really fun having you on the podcast. We'll have to have you on again sometime later to talk about more design stuff. Um, So as we wrap up today, I just wanted to remind everybody that if you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast. And um, also, if you wouldn't mind sharing it on your social media or leaving us a review, that just really helps us to get the word out to the right people so that they find us. Um, If you'd like to connect with us at Dogwood, you can head on over to our website at dogwoodmediasolutions.com. That's really kind of the best place to find us. It has all of our social media. You can contact us. You can call us. You can email us. You can also find out a lot more about our different uh, services that we do and also our staff and just learn more about us as a company. So if you want to connect with us, head on over there. And we hope that you enjoyed this podcast and we will see you next time. So until next time, happy marketing. Happy marketing.